from space. We are thrilled to bring you this science experiment in partnership with the Australian Library and Information Association, Scholastic, and Lianza. We are proud to support the 2021 National Simultaneous Storytime from Space. After today's science demonstration, be sure and watch Give Me Some Space by Philip Bunting, read by astronaut Shannon Walker. Join Una, a young space explorer, as she hops around the solar system searching for life in space and makes a surprising discovery. Today's science experiment on the International Space Station touches on a hot topic, radiative energy transfer, a key element of global warming. Helping with today's science time from space experiment is French astronaut Thomas Pesquet. Thomas is a French aerospace engineer, pilot, and a European Space Agency astronaut. Prior to this mission, he lived and worked on the International Space Station as a member of Expedition 50 and 51 from November 2016 to June 2017. He recently returned to the International Space Station on the SpaceX Crew Dragon for another six-month expedition. Tumal will help us with the setup, activation, and record data for the thermal balance experiment. To better understand today's experiment, let's step back. Way back. We are quite fortunate that the Earth is at a distance from the Sun with temperatures that are just right for life on Earth. The Earth's temperature must be a balance between two extremes. One extreme is the temperature of the Sun, which is extremely hot, 5,497 degrees Celsius. The other extreme is the bone-chilling temperatures of deep space, negative 269 degrees Celsius. Even though the Earth is 150 million kilometers from the Sun, Earth is constantly basking in the Sun's radiated heat. We know that this vital source of energy is crucial. It keeps the Earth warm enough to support life. But what keeps the Earth from overheating and becoming too hot for life as we know it? The key is thermal balance. Let's think about making breakfast. The frying pan is in contact with the red hot element. The frying pan does not get red hot because it radiates heat into the air. The temperature of the pan is a balance between the heat coming in the bottom and the heat released into the air. In order to cook eggs, it's ideal to have the pan at just the right balanced temperature. The thermal balance cooks the eggs but doesn't burn it to a crisp. The idea of thermal balance is critical for the Earth as well. The Earth must radiate the same amount of energy out to space as it receives from the Sun. The atmosphere and the Earth's surface radiate energy out to deep space. The warmer Earth's atmosphere and surface are, the greater amount of radiation is released to space. So Earth's temperature is a balance. It reaches a temperature such that it radiates just as much heat to space as it receives from the Sun. So if the Earth radiates an equal amount of energy into the cold depths of space, shouldn't our average planetary temperature remain constant? What if something changes in the atmosphere or we change the surface of the Earth? For example, cutting too much of the forests or paving large areas of the ground. Might this affect the temperature balance? Scientists have done a great deal of work to understand this balance. Using satellites, the radiation given off by the Earth and the temperatures on the Earth have been measured in considerable detail. This is done continually on a global level and requires many millions, actually billions of measurements from satellites. These measurements are done every day, in fact, every hour, and are combined with ground-based measurements to develop a very good understanding of the Earth's thermal balance. Thank you. 
Using the same principles of radiation, we can model the sun, earth, and space thermal balance on a much smaller scale. We performed an experiment on the International Space Station and were able to measure temperatures of our scaled down sun, earth, space model. In our experiment, the heat source is a light bulb, which radiates thermal energy just as the sun does. The model Earth is a hollow aluminum sphere, which absorbs the energy and warms up. The sphere is an enclosed with an aluminum tube that is a heat sink. One end of the tube is open to the light bulb. The inside of the tube is black, just like space, so it's a good absorber of radiation. At the far end of this tube is an electronic cooler that draws heat out of the tube and transfers it to the air inside the International Space Station. This cool tube mimics the cold temperatures of deep space. Our little Earth is between a hot radiation heat source and a cold radiation heat sink, just as the Earth is between a hot sun and cold space. The experiment was run twice, once with a sphere that was painted white and again with a sphere that was painted black. We tested one of several ways that the properties of the surface can affect the thermal balance of the sphere. Remember, thermal balance is when the same amount of heat leaves an object as comes into it. When you have this balance, the temperature of the object stays the same. With a simple change to the surface of the sphere, we can test how thermal balance changes. This small-scaled experiment replicates the principles of the thermal balance of the Sun-Earth-Space system. The hot light bulb stays at the same temperature in both experiment runs. The cool heat sink stayed at its same temperature in both experiment runs. Just as the Sun remains at its hot temperature and space remained at its cold temperature. The only thing that changes is the color, a property of the surface of the spheres. What do you think? Will there be a difference in the temperature of the white sphere compared to the black sphere? Do you think one will end up at a different temperature than the other? In this experiment, the temperatures of the spheres and the cooled heat sink are monitored using small temperature sensors called thermistors. The signal from the thermistors are sensed by a data unit and sent to a computer where we can monitor even the slightest change in temperature. In the science video, you may notice Tama references a tablet from time to time. The tablet includes experiment procedures, a set of instructions for how each step of the experiment is to be done. It is especially important that these steps are followed exactly so we don't accidentally get bad results. This is one of the important skills that astronauts develop, reading and executing instructions precisely, even for an experiment that they have no training on. This requires discipline and careful reading. It also requires that the science team write very precise procedures. Let's take a look at the steps of each experiment. First, Tama turned on the electronic unit to cool the heat sink until it cooled to about four degrees Celsius. This took a little over 40 minutes as the cooling unit extracted heat out of the heat sink. The signals from the thermistors were recorded throughout this cooling time. Second, Tama turned the light bulb, aka the sun, on. The data unit continued to record the thermistor signals for another 40 minutes. Throughout this time, signals from the thermistors were sensed by the data unit and recorded on the computer. For about 90 minutes, the data unit collected a great deal of data for each experiment, actually about 1.5 million data points for each. This data was analyzed using mathematics to convert the measurements into temperature readings. The thermistors, the data unit, and the mathematical analysis gives us our thermometers. Finally, Tama turned off the light bulb and the cooling unit. 
After a few days, the experiment was conducted once more with the second sphere in the exact same way so that we can examine how the change in the color of the sphere's surface changes the temperature of the sphere. Even though it sounds simple, there are lots of details to keep track of. Tama is constantly connected with Mission Control in Houston, the Payload Integration Specialist in Florida, the Operation Controllers in Huntsville, Alabama, and our Payload Developer in Canada. In fact, the entire Science Time from Space team joined in a live video conference to watch and support the experiment. The black sphere's final temperature heated up one and a half degree more. If we change the surface of the spheres, we change the temperature. The same thing happens to Earth. If we change the surface of the Earth, we change its temperature. You can explore that concept. Have you ever walked across a hot parking lot with bare feet and had to rush over to cooler grass for relief? This is a lot like what we learned with this science time from space experiment. If you take away grass and trees and replace them with concrete, the surface will become hotter and contribute to warming the earth. Certain materials are much better at absorbing heat. Notice the difference between the temperature of concrete and the temperature of the grass. Even though both surfaces are receiving the same amount of radiated energy from the sun, there is a big difference in their temperature. So which will limit warming of the earth? More concrete or more grass and trees? On a much larger scale, we can see similar differences when we observe earth from space. Satellites and ground-based stations take a lot of temperature readings all around the earth. Humans have been studying temperatures of the Earth for more than a century to help us understand what is happening to our planet. By understanding our Earth, we can learn how to take better care of it. We hope you enjoyed today's Science Time from Space demonstration. Watch it as many times as you like. We hope you'll join us for future demonstrations or for one of our Story Time from Space book readings. To learn more about today's experiment or how you can support this exciting program, visit StoryTimeFromSpace.com.